going here. Um, thanks for attending today's presentation, talking about inside and outside plant, and that might mean different things to different folks on the end of the line here. Um, but uh, we're going to cover it, obviously, from the perspective of Graphical Networks, uh, NetTerrain. We have a product for doing inside and outside, kind of see the relationship between the two. Uh, and maybe, you know, maybe it'd be a good fit for some of you and others might not be. You might be looking for a different type of tool or something that does more or is focused in one particular area, which is which is fine. Um, so, but thanks for coming to this and uh, kind of checking things out. Uh, from our uh, perspective here, and I uh, want to get going here with uh, just a quick PowerPoint, uh, just a couple slides here. I'm not going to talk about PowerPoints to a basically a live uh, demo. So uh, this is just, you know, we're graphical networks. I'm Jason Sherman. I do a lot of pre and post sales things here. And uh, basically what that means is, you know, if you're looking at a product, I answer technical questions, do demos, things like that. And then if you purchase the software, I help you get it up and running and answer questions, you know, uh, moving forward. So there's some different customers, depending on kind of the space you're in. And we probably have a customer in that space. We actually have customers around the world, uh, been around a long time. And, uh, you know, it's a space we've been in and understand pretty well as far as the inside plan. Using software to kind of cover those areas. Um, well, any questions? If you do have questions at the end, you can put them into the the uh, chat on the the presentation. I think there's a place you can uh, not the chat, but there's a place for uh, questions in the uh, the GoTo webinar there. So uh, when the time comes, feel free, or or you know during this, you can certainly put that in there. So this is where we are. This is who we are. This is our website. If you want to go out there, you can give us a call. So if you see something of interest, uh, certainly uh, let us know. So let me escape out of that. and We're going to just move into the software and, you know, what's inside and outside plant. So inside plant, typically from our perspective, when we talk about inside plant, it's usually things that are inside the buildings, rooms, floors, that type of thing. It doesn't necessarily have to be DCIM where you're doing data center, rack and stack type stuff. Uh, it certainly can be. Uh, but it also might be things like a lot of customers that do uh, floor plans, want to show rooms, equipment in rooms or in the hallways or wherever it is. And also things like, you know, ports down to the, the wall jacks of the rooms so they know, you know, where the wiring runs and where their, you know, wireless access points are on the floor plan and that, that sort of stuff. So those, those are certain things you can get into. And then the outside plan would be more I've got buildings connected together. I've got fiber runs. I got uh, various fiber, um, you know, conduits, fiber, fiber strands, and so on, and how those are connected. So, you know, the details are up to you as far as how much detail or little detail you might want to bring in. We're a tool that's uh, pretty flexible in, from the standpoint of using the tool, using our catalog, and so on. And, you know, net terrain is basically a, a objects in a, a drawing or a white space. So you have, like, here. These are objects. I can move these around on the white space. And on the right-hand side, if I wanted to add something to the white space, I basically drag and drop an object. Um, so if I go to all, I can come in here and drag something down. So we're a drag and drop tool. We, you know, you, you've got information. You want to represent it um, graphically. You want to be able to see the information, how it relates to other information and data. You drag and drop an object and create hierarchies and other things. I mean, there's more to it than that from the standpoint of, there's discovery side to it. There's the ability to pull data from external data. There's things like bulk import mechanisms, Excel, and so on. So those are available too. And depending on what you're trying to do, you know, maybe again, there's some uh, you know, a proper way to bring your data into our tool. Maybe not. Or maybe you just don't have anything, and you're just really trying to get started here, and what you're trying to document. So uh, I'm going to put up a question here. Um, let me launch this. Um, just a quick uh, question poll, if you wouldn't mind clicking on the button, what you're trying to sort of manage or give me, one, it'll give me a little focus, but uh, just troubleshooting sort of space management and project. When I say project management, it's more from the standpoint of uh, I've got to install new equipment or hardware. How am I going to manage that as a, as a whole from the standpoint of knowing where things go, how they're going to connect, get connected, and, and, and so on. So. Yeah, troubleshooting, that's pretty high. 
um, then project management and then sort of space managed behind that. So it makes sense. But a lot of my customers are sort of similar. I get a lot of folks using software want to document from a troubleshooting standpoint, right? Uh, that kind of thing. So, so again, back to sort of outside plant. Oh, I think I have to stop, uh, close the poll. So let me close that. So, so anyway, thanks for taking that. So we ended up about 50, almost 50, 50 between troubleshooting and project management, space management, sort of a lagger there. So I'm going to close that poll. Thanks for that. Um, so back to, you know, what outside plant. Outside plant for us is, again, sort of the in-between buildings or fiber runs and that, that sort of thing. And, uh, we, we, um, when you drag an object in our tool, you get the space. And one of the things you can do is you, we do an integration with the outside plant tool, basically. So um, not an outside plant tool, but a map. So you can set a particular uh, map that you might want to use. You can upload backgrounds and do that sort of thing, too. But you can... Also set a map if you, you know, a particular area that you want to focus on. I'm in the DC area, so I'll just sort of zoom into this area. You can search for things too and just click OK. And then if you need to, sorry about the zooming. It's, but as you zoom in, you get down to street level and then you can show runs. And I'll show some example drawings of some of these different things I'm talking about. But it just gives you a feel for sort of the software and what it can do. Um, again, the catalog on the right, those are the things that you put into the tool. That's what's what, what ultimately is representing your data um, from that standpoint. So it's a hierarchical tool. So if I double click, it drills down, it creates a sub diagram, and then you put something inside that sub diagram, and then it just kind of continues on down the path, um, down to whatever endpoint detail you want to get to. Some people, it's port to port connections, you know, all the way down to a wall jack or a patch panel switch where you've got the actual ports and you show the physical connections. For some people, it's outside plant where they're actually showing conduit runs on a map and relationships between the conduit and fibers, fiber strands, and that sort of thing. So, depending on what you're trying to do. So, here we've got I've got a background image. This is actually just using a background image of a map, world map, and I've got some different uh, sort of uh, diagrams I can jump into. I'm going to go over to Sydney here. And you'll notice when I double click again, it kind of goes into a drill down. So. When you when you when you're talking about things like troubleshooting, uh, one of the things is knowing paths. You know, what is the path between points? And I'm going to get back to that path view in just a second. But if I go into here, I can turn off the background just so you can kind of get a little perspective and turn the background on as well. I go to my wiring closet and actually see things like cabinets. It's got some connections over here. Those connections I can choose to turn on and off, but I can also go down into a cabinet level view and see information. So I can see ports, let's say a port on a switch, port on a patch panel, that type of thing. This allows me to see a port, let's say on a switch, and uh, in this case it shows me what it's connected to. This connection would be a patch panel, and I can double click, and it'll take me to it. So this is getting into physical, you know, physical path type views. Uh, if I go back to that switch port, so you can imagine you're standing in front of a switch in your data center wiring closet, wherever it happens to be, and you double click, and then it's going to give you more of a physical path view where I can see from the pro curve passing through uh, patch panels, connecting to, in this case, a wall jack, and what does that terminate to? Some device, and this is inside a room. All these things are clickable. You can double click. It'll take you to the object effectively and show you, hey, here I am. I can go up a level and actually see where it is too. So again, this is obviously inside plant things. And what what you want to define inside plant is really kind of up to you. Again, we, we kind of try and keep our software pretty flexible in that the objects in our catalog, we certainly have some predefined ones, but you can add your own and change those. And how you sort of set up the hierarchy, the levels and layers, up to you as well. You don't have to have a fixed hierarchy. You don't have to have this much detail, or you can have more, uh, depending on what you're trying to do. So just another example of some inside plan. Then I'll talk more outside plan here. Let me uh, just zoom in over here to my Baltimore. These objects that I'm clicking on as well, coming from the catalog, you'll notice they have data data fields on the left-hand side that can be populated with information and data. That data could come from an external data source. 
Um, and it can you can choose what you display, where it is, position, and those types of things, as you probably expect. Uh, those fields you can add to those fields. We don't we don't say, hey, these are the only fields you can populate again. Those are things you can add very easily, depending on your role. We do have different roles in our system. So if you are doing inside outside plant and you need to share diagrams with people, but you don't necessarily want them changing the drawings, you can have things like read only users and so on. So I'm just going to navigate down into my Eden building here. A couple floors. Again, I've got these floors just sit on top of a picture of the building itself. I've got some counts down here in the bottom left. These are dynamic. So as equipment gets added, those counts are automatically changed or subtracted, vice versa. So depending on what you're trying to do. Uh, here I'm looking at a data center view floor plan. So I'm in the floor. I'm really just focused on the data center at this point. Got different things going on in here. I got some Lieberts over here and some, I don't even know what this thing is, uh, a, a crack unit. So this is really just representing those devices. A circuit breaker panel I can go into and actually see things like the breakers, um, which I may drive back to in a second. So if you're doing things like power, um, you know, we're a good tool for bringing power information in or discovering power information, you know, and doing these calculations so you get an idea um, of, you know, which cabinets are using too much power or, you know, what, how much power are they using? Same with the equipment. So again, back to inside plant. What is it to you and what are you trying to do with, with inside plant? Do I need to show racks and cabinets? Do I need to calculate things like power, rack utilization, and so on? Certainly in our tool, you can do that, but I have some customers that don't. They Sure, they, they want to show a cabinet, but they don't really care about what we refer to as a smart cabinet where it can calculate power and weight and other things. They are just like, you know what, I just want a place to show where the, where the equipment is. And that's fine. We have an option for that in our Net Terrain Logical product. In our DCIM product, if you really want to do rack and stack and you know all that good stuff, then you can rack mount the equipment and show the equipment rack mounted. So you have devices you can drag and drop and put them in, go to the device catalog and basically drag things over into the, uh, into the project. So I can come down here and say, you know, I want to look for my servers and drag stuff out and rack mount it. Of course, this is a doesn't have any room in it. Um, but the point is, you know, if these are type of rack elevations you want to do where it locks in, calculates power, and so on, certainly you can do that. Again, back to if I click on an object, you'll see information about the object on the left. Um, if you want to have links to external. Um, another example of things customers, uh, some of my customers like to do is a lot of people use SolarWinds. It's a pretty popular tool. Um, besides us bringing data from SolarWinds, they may link us to SolarWinds or vice versa, where if you're in here, you might have a link. I have a link here to Splunk. Well, it's a made-up link to Splunk. But you have a link to something like Splunk or What's Up Gold, where you click on it, and it takes you to that object in their system. So if they have a way of doing some sort of dynamic search, you would pass the DNS name or the IP address into the search, and it'll take you to that system. But the thing you're looking for, I think, in any tool is you want to see how it relates to the other tools you have in the environment. You know, can it leverage data? Can they basically have some sort of links between each other to make it easy to find information and get around and navigate? We're pretty good about searching. I get a lot of good feedback about searching in our tool uh, from the standpoint of finding information quickly. We try and index everything. And, whether it's text or whether it's the objects in the fields and so on. We try and do all those things so you can get to it pretty fast. And again, the data fields are up to you. You capture the data you want to capture and display the information you want to display and so on. So something like this, you may show, again, back to sort of that viewpoint of um, device port connections, double click, shows me physical path of, hey, what's the starting point where I just came from? Where does it end? Where does it terminate? case to some big chassis. I'm going to go through this. I'm going to go back out of this for a second because I'm going to do this again, but sort of do it from a power standpoint. So if you have a power supply you're representing and you want to know, hey, what's driving this ultimately? Where's, where's the power source coming from? Well, you could have those connections in there as well. Um, now, some connections, data connections, some connections you might be able to discover automatically, layer 2, CDP, LLDP, those types of things. Power connections, I don't think there's really a way to, to find that information, maybe through a little bit through your SNMP data 
um, possibly, but uh, but you could set it up where you're showing connections all the way back to a circuit breaker that's feeding the the PDU that you're connected to, you know, even the, however you want to do the um, show the breakers again as much or as little detail really as you want from our uh, from our standpoint. So inside plant kind of whatever you want to make it to be as far as you know what are you trying to track I always tell people hey track what's really kind of the pain point if it's troubleshooting focus on the things that are going to help you troubleshoot your your um, your environment quickly and kind of stay away from the extraneous things because you can get you can get wrapped up really in any tool documentation tool you can do a lot of things sometimes you, you you can take on a lot more than what you really needed to. So, and I know, you know, I talk to a lot of our customers, people out there, people looking for packages. They want to try and automate things as best they can, uh, and because they typically don't have time to do network documentation, you don't necessarily have a full-time person or even a part-time person. So, you want to try and put in place as many automation pieces as you can. So, we do have a few of those things that we can help you with. Um, inside, I'm sorry, outside plant. I'm getting my uh, inside outside stuff upside down so I'm gonna focus on a university campus here talking more about outside plant uh, zoom into um, a location so I've got a map on the background dynamic map you'll see some lines sort of connecting things together uh, if I go over my right hand side I'm actually doing some filtering I'm only showing conduit here I can turn those on and off um, if I want to do other things, I want to say, you know, show me some trunks and show trunks. I don't really care about necessarily showing trunks and other things at this point. What I really care about is conduit and maybe the relationship between my conduit and what's in it. Are those trunks and, you know, the strands inside the trunks and you can build these different relationships. So at any point, if you're looking at something like a trunk, again, back to outside plant where I'm showing something like a piece of conduit. And I'm like, okay, well, what's inside this conduit? And on the left-hand side, it'll tell me, well, there's bundled links three. If I click on that, it'll basically say, hey, here I am. I got three trunks inside this conduit 1009. I can click on one of those, and it'll, it'll basically show me, say, hey, this is where I'm at. Helps if I actually press the button. Right? So it'll flash on the screen. It'll highlight it, and if it was turned off, it'll turn it on temporarily, because right now my conduit's the only thing on, but I can turn the trunks back on. And that, if I click on a trunk, I can say, hey, what's inside this trunk? Well, I got 16 bundled links inside here. What are those? Oh, here you go. I got a list of fiber strands. I got 16 of them, and this is the trunk. So I can click on that trunk and go to it, or I can go back and look at the list of strands and take me to the endpoints fact so this is where you start to get into a you can have a relationship between the inside and the outside plan so I do show on diagram this is going to take me to a strand but it's going to take me to the end point of the strand so the end point for a fiber strand typically it's going to be something like uh, could be the patch panel that terminates into inside the building uh, fiber patch panel uh, but ultimately you might have the termination point to the actual piece of equipment where that fiber strand terminates into so in this case I've got a port, uh, and that's getting fed with a piece of fiber going back to a manhole A, splitter A, port one. And, you know, where is that? Well, that's in the plant. That's that's on the street, this manhole. And if I go up a level, you'll see this device, and it's in a cabinet. If I go up again, you'll see the cabinet inside the room. And if I go up again, you'll see the floor and so on. So I know it's a lot to take in, these hierarchies, but... Um, it gives you the level of detail you might want. Now, a lot of customers, they're like, you know, I just want to terminate to the building or I just want to terminate the patch panel in the building. I don't need to go into the racks and all that thing. That, that's fine. You don't need to do any of that. You can, again, hierarchy is up to you how deep and far you want to get into it. But if you do need to track down, again, I can double click, bring up this uh, view of, okay, show me the path from this point, point A. Now I'm getting a bigger path because now I'm actually going from inside the rack to the device so this is really inside cabinet here inside plant because this is inside the building all the way down to the port now i'm going outside the building to a splitter that's in a manhole and following the path to some termination point into a whole different building i've gone through enclosures that are in the street i've gone through splitters that are in manholes i've terminated down to an apc net shelter 
uh, rack where I've got a piece of equipment in there, uh, an ASR 9000B, in fact. So any of these things you can double click and get to if you want to just see what that path is. Again, this goes back to troubleshooting. You know, what's where is this thing? You know, what's what's the broken point? This is not the prettiest of the inside splitter here, but if I go up a level, you'll see the splitter. This is inside the manhole. So again, I go back to the splitter. And so you can start to terminate fiber on one end coming in and fiber going out. Basically, you're just creating, you're just showing how the fiber is connected together from point to point. Um, and you can have as many termination points as you want to for, you know, different, you have different types of fiber devices uh, that you're going to use, of course. Uh, some of those might be in manholes, some of them might be on a pole, uh, just depends. I've got, you know, like a more traditional enclosure where I've where I've slotted it, where I've said, you know, you can have 12, 12 fiber points inside this device, and then you, if you want 12 more, you add it as a card, basically. Some of these are set up like cards, but some of them just depends on how we want to show them as in the device. So, so outside, inside plant. So now you've got a relationship between the outside equipment, where things are connected, how they're connected, and then, of course, to the uh, the outside back into the inside. And you, you can have your buildings along the path, and then if things break out where you've got fiber between two points, a large trunk that has strands, then you can break out the strands to go through a uh, patch of some sort and have it run off and go into the other building. And any of these, if they have the conduit and they have connections and they have some link, you can always find what's inside those. So all the data that you see here would be stored in a database, SQL Server database in our case, and that allows you to do reporting back out of the system so you can see uh, you know, visually the information and other data that you might be looking at. So I've got one more poll for you guys. This is just showing some a few different uh, report types. Uh, are you tracking OSP or inside plan? Maybe you're doing both, so we probably should have had a third there that said we're doing both. <laughs> but if you have a if if you have one more than the other, 51% OSP versus inside plant. Um, so if outside plant versus inside, uh, let us know kind of what you're looking at. Um, that's the last poll for the day, and this is where I'm going to stop. We're pretty much almost out of time here. I want to see if there's any questions. If there are, um, I think there's a question area. I'll see if that pops up. So if you guys have any questions, put those in. And I'll give you guys a minute to do that. If you want to try things out, give us a call. If you have questions, pricing, all that good stuff, let us know. We're happy to talk to you. Uh, you can go out to uh, netterrain.com if you want to poke around a little bit. Um, there's a. It basically gives you an instance that's blank. It's just a white piece of paper, but you do have objects you can drag out and do some, you know, connections and other things and get a feel for the basic GUI. Um, you know, to, to really get kind of deep into it, especially with outside plant, because we have these relationships between links and stuff. It's not, it helps to know a few details, but you're welcome to give it a shot. Uh, certainly call us if you have questions or need assistance with anything. We're, we're always happy to help you out and hear from you, and, uh, you know, just to see if we're fit. Because again, you know, we may not be the right uh, uh, tool for you. You know, there's a lot of tools out there, so you want to make sure you get the right thing. So we've got a question about limit on objects. Um, not really any kind of limit for us. I've got lo very large customers have tens of thousands of objects in a project, uh, hundreds of thousands of links. So I think my biggest one I've seen is five, six, seven hundred thousand links. Um, that's a very, you know, that's like a massive, uh, on a massive scale, it's a whole country of equipment, basically. Um, so really no limitation from that standpoint. Um, you know, depending on the number of users and other things, you might have to have certain server parameters and requirements, but uh, you can talk to us about that and what you're, you know, what you're looking to do. Um, there's no limit on what's in the catalog. It's and really no limit on what you use. Um, as far as um, other questions, I got an import spreadsheet question. Yeah, we've got different import mechanisms. Um, they do different things depending on what you're trying to do, but Excel import, uh, certainly great for bulk import type things. Uh, we have KMZ, which was another question. So if you're coming out of Google Earth, you want to sort of expand on that, you can do a KMZ or KML uh, type import. And 
you know, give that a shot. That works pretty well too. You got to define a map and bring in the data. Um, there's a question around cable length. Well, you can track cable length. Between, yeah, so if you're using our outside plant and you got um, and you're you're uh, you're basically doing runs between buildings or between you know manholes or handholes, you can right click on a link and it'll tell you the length of the uh, cable, or actually tell you the length of where your mouse is too, so you can kind of get a feel for total length at a certain point. Um, so that's kind of cool to be able to do. And, oh yeah, it's a good question too. You know, people are used to using certainly Google Earth, which is a fantastic product from the standpoint of seeing maps. I don't know how great it is to do outside plant stuff, but uh, people are used to having satellite view as an option. We don't offer satellite view. So if you're looking for a tool to do outside plant and see the satellite imagery, uh, we don't offer that. So I'm not a solution for you. Uh, we're strictly more of a street level, non-satellite view thing. So just so you guys know. Uh, how do we integrate with SolarWinds? Because I set it up. Oh, anyway, before that question, how big is a thousand objects? How many objects are in the that university campus sample? Well, that's a good question. Uh, well, let's go take a look. I think I can get a count pretty easily. So my little example project here. Uh, this is 84 cabinets, 63 nodes, and 79 devices. So that's not very much. Uh, the things you have to count are the devices and the cabinets and the nodes. This would be 150. You don't count links, so we don't license based on links or ports or any slots, cards, none of that stuff. It's really if you drag it from our catalog minus the links, if you drag it from the catalog, that's pretty much what we count. Um, we can give you more details about that, but that's pretty much it. I mean, so a thousand objects, depending on what you're trying to do, might carry you far, might not carry you far at all. But you know, so thanks for the question there. Uh, how do we integrate with SolarWinds? Uh, we have something called the an integration toolkit. So you can't, so the or that thing, netterrain.com, that's SaaS only. You can't do integrations with SolarWinds and stuff with that tool. That's really meant for if you just need to do some cloud stuff and you you just want to import stuff through Excel or do the manual drag and drop thing. Uh, that's all great for all that stuff. But if you need to do an integration with SolarWinds or other systems, then you need to house the software yourself internally, which you can do. Most of my customers do that anyway. Um, and in that case, there's something called the integration toolkit. It's basically a piece of software that runs with the server that allows you to connect to SolarWinds or really any data set and pull data through into NetTerrain and visualize all that information. So it's all good. Uh, NetTerrain, oh, wait a minute. Uh, oh, the poll is still up. Sorry. I'm not really showing anything, by the way, but I, I think I mentioned that might have been showing something. Sorry about that. Thanks for mentioning that, by the way, that I had that up. Oh, yeah, you're right. I was trying to show off the... Uh, the map. So back to this thing. So on the left hand side, there's some counts. Basically, there's about 150 in this map and everything inside of it. And then there's about 1200 links. The links we don't count. It's if I drag an object out, that's a count. So that's the stuff you need to count buildings, you know, manholes, handholes, splice points, all that stuff. That's those are the things you count. Not when I say splice point, I don't mean like the what what I envision as a splice point, like a port to port type connection. I'm just talking about like an enclosure. So, um, and as far as pricing, you know, all these different things. Again, pricing really just goes back to the number of elements you drag out. And again, when we say element, I'm not talking about the ports or slots and cards. I'm really talking about like a physical chassis or a building. Like these guys here would be a license count or a cabinet if you're using our cabinets. Cabinets are something you don't necessarily need to license. That's typically part of DCIM. So we have a product called NetTerrain Logical, which technically I can do everything I showed you with that for the most part. Um, the only thing you wouldn't get are the what we call smart racks. And because that ties in with DCIM and that ties in with power, uh, you know, capturing power real time and other things. So if you're not sure which one you want to use, but if or if you're like, you know what, I really don't need the power or the, the smart rack type thing where it's automatically counting things for me, then you might just look at logical because uh, the prices are so different there. Um, let's see. So hopefully that helps you out. If you got more questions, hey, let us know. We passed the 30 minutes here, turn it into a pumpkin. So uh, thanks everybody for attending. Really appreciate it. Uh, ping us if you got questions. We're happy to help you out, ask, answer questions, and all that good stuff. So. Take care, everybody. Thanks a lot.